So for someone who doesn't have like a strong male role model in their life, someone who grows up with, let's say, a father who's absent or a father who turns out to be like a hypocrite or someone who, you know, constantly tears them down and never really validates or affirms them. Mm -hmm. Uh, how does that affect like someone's security, like how they see themselves mm -hmm. and how they see their value and worth in their life? Yeah, most definitely. I see that in counseling frequently. Um, well, one, you really don't believe uh, your value. Even if you're a Christian, you still do not find your worth in Christ. It's mm -hmm. all about your performance yeah. and what you do. And you're looking for people to validate that regularly. So even though you know the Word of God, you read the Word of God, uh, many times you're still trying to get someone to validate what you didn't have. Right. And, and even when they do, you don't always believe it. Yeah. And I think that's a really good point as well. And I, I usually tell this to people that I'm counseling, and I'm sure you do uh, mm -hmm. too, where it's like, yeah, God created us to be fully satisfied in Him, mm -hmm. but He also created parents to fulfill a really important role. So if God really didn't think that parents had an important role, he would just be like, oh, don't worry about how you treat your kids because I'm their father and I'm just going to fill any void that you leave anyway. You know, like obviously right. we do have a need. There's an innate need in people to right. be validated and affirmed by their parents. Yeah. And when that's not given to them, uh, you know, what I usually encourage is it, it is it does tend to be more with women than men. Uh, but what usually ends up happening is that a void is created in them. And it doesn't really matter how much affirmation they get in their adult life. It doesn't make up for the lack of affirmation that they had as a child because that's still there. It's kind of like if I was starving yesterday and I eat today, that's great, but I'll always have the memory of being hungry yesterday. Mm -hmm. You know, like, so I'll be full now, but I'll always have that memory of being hungry and that's going to impact me. So. If you had years as a child of feeling unwanted, unloved, uncared for, insecure uh, about how you're operating as a, as a person, basically, uh, you being validated as an adult is not going to make up for that. And like you said, you might even have an aversion where you mm -hmm. grew up so much thinking, I am worthless, that when people are telling you like, no, you're, you're awesome, you're amazing, mm -hmm. you'll reject it, you'll push it away mm -hmm. and be like, no, I, I know I'm worthless because that's how you felt so much as a child. Mm -hmm. you know, do you see that as well? Yeah, I definitely see that. And you're, you are correct. I, I do know that there is that void. Um, and with that, you know, I, I, I don't want to jump in. I don't want to discount people's pain and what yeah. they went through. But I also know um, that the only one that can help them with that is Jesus. Right. And that is over time. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's constantly knowing and speaking the truth yeah. into our lives. But sometimes when we have somebody else speaking the truth, say like Robbie, right. um, and we become that, that vulnerable person yeah. because of that. Maybe that's where you want to go. I don't know. Yeah, and, and I think that that's so true because what predators do, like people like Robbie, and if you haven't read like the actual investigation of what Robbie did, it was more than just committing adultery. Like he literally spent long quantities of time with women where he groomed them mm -hmm. and got them more dependent upon him emotionally so that he can receive sexual favors from them. Mm -hmm. And what, what I saw in the testimony with Ravi, and when I say testimony, I don't mean his Christian testimony. I mean his legal testimony uh, mm -hmm. of what happened between him and these women, uh, is that when a predator is going to move in on somebody, they will begin by being incredibly affirming and validating, which will fill the void that that person has mm -hmm. in their life. Mm -hmm. But then it's very easy for them to turn on them and to start using them. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because the affirmation invites people in, but remember, deep down, they feel worthless. Mm -hmm. And they feel the need to prove that they're valuable. Mm -hmm. And so once I start using you, it almost creates like a sense of normalcy of like, yeah, this is what I'm good for, is to be used mm -hmm. and to be abused. And they don't think much of it. Whereas like someone who is affirmed and does have that kind of security and that affirmation, once a relationship like that starts turning for them, it's easier for them to say like, no, like that's not good for me. Like, I'm worth more than that. Yeah. I think they also don't recognize the turning of it. Right. So they have a failure, like, to have boundaries. So as it starts to turn, it's not something quick. 
mm-hmm. where like if they were a believer, they, they could recognize it. I feel like it's slowly turning and you start to question yourself because you've questioned yourself all along because you've had these like this void in your life. And so you start to think, am I making this up? It's almost like this craziness of feeling like he would never do this. So you start to discount it right, and make excuses for the person. Yeah. And so um, I think that's how those people end up like falling for that because they don't recognize the signs because they're so invested in this person at mm. this point. Yeah. And so they, they're, they're not... And they're not trusting the Holy Spirit in their life to say this is not right. Right. You know, so they're thinking that they're that they're wrong, and they've been told that for many years. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, in in the next section, I want to do I do want to talk about the idea of what Ravi did and how people mm-hmm. like him use that and use techniques to really play on people's insecurities, their um, unsure. Like their shaky kind of grasp on reality sometimes where they question their reality mm. and how predators can really feed on that. Mm. But uh, when we're talking about this this void, I always think about Leah in the Bible, mm-hmm. in the book of Genesis, yeah. where you know Leah's name literally means burden. Mm. And the reason why her dad named her that is because she was not a very attractive woman. That's what we see throughout the Bible. So no one wanted to marry her. And the father, Laban, was kind of a jerk. He was not a good dad. And he treated his daughters like commodities. And he's like, really, the only value you are to me is how much dowry you could bring in of someone who wants to marry you. And Leah, no one wanted to marry her. But everyone wanted to marry her younger sister, Rachel, who was very pretty. Mm -hmm. And in their culture, Laban couldn't marry Rachel until he married Leah. So he's like, you're just a burden. Like, you're keeping me from what I want, which is money. Mm -hmm. And so he tricks Jacob into marrying both of them. And Leah starts using Jacob as like that surrogate, like father figure where she's trying to earn his approval, the approval she never got with her dad Mm -hmm. by bearing him children. Mm -hmm. And like all the male children she names after that longing where the first one's Reuben, which means see a son. It's like, hey, pay attention to me. Like, see, I'm giving you sons. And then the second one is Simeon, which means heard. And she's like, hey, pay attention to me. Listen to me. Mm -hmm. I, I, I respect me because of what I'm doing for you. And then the third one's Levi, because that means attached. She's like, now maybe my husband will be attached to me. Maybe he'll love me because of what I'm doing. Mm. And then the fourth child, she names Judah, which means praise. And she says, for now I shall praise God. Mm -hmm. So what God does is like, yeah, as a child, you may have been unloved by your dad or whatever father figure was in your life. But what Leah recognizes is, but God never stopped loving me. Like there was no beginning to God's affirmation of me or the security he gave me. God always did those things and he never stopped. And that is what began to like heal her. Because like any other male figure that comes into your life, they can love you now, but they weren't there back when you were unloved, back when you were this person that felt rejected and worthless. What Leah recognizes is the only one who actually was there though, Mm -hmm. was God. And as she receives that, it begins to heal her. That's good. 